these reports are not just made to be written and then presented, but actually they are supposed to be a start for a political debate, uh, most of all within the, the labor movement within the Nordic countries, but, but um, more widely and to spur on that uh, debate. Uh, we have a few uh, comments to be, to be presented. Uh, uh, we'll start, uh, we have, well, a political perspective, we have a business perspective and then we have a labor perspective, but we'll uh, start with the political perspective and member of parliament, Päivi Lipponen, who is also the uh, chair uh, of the committee for the future in the parliament. Päivi. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have heard very good experts and when I read uh, reports I thought what will be my role? Do you hear me? No. 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 Well, what has happened? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, I try to use my voice better. Uh, so when I read these reports, I thought, what will be my, my role? And uh, if I tell a little bit of my background, I am a historian. And after that, I did my PhD in education. And then I also studied economics. I did MBA. Now I have been seven years in parliament. And I have these years I have worked in committee, economic committee and committee for the future and now I'm a chair lady in this committee for the future and, and committee for the future is a like think tank in, in parliament and, and our work is really interesting. So um, I think I try to tell you tell you some of my ideas how to create economic growth and how develop innovation policy in Finland. And and I think that my my points are very political and also maybe a little bit critical also. So, uh, the reports by Jan Fa Fa Fagerberg, Morten Fosas and Johanna Vartiainen presents how R&D has developed from the point of view of innovation policy. It presents the different solutions of the Nordic countries. Sweden, Finland and Denmark are in innovation leaders, as we heard. But if we want better innovation policy in Finland, we need a complete understanding of the situation and structural reform. First, we need to set a new and um, ambitious goal for innovation policy. The goal should be an ecologically sustainable econom economy as sustainable welfare. We need to be uh, solving the difficult global problems. The next question is how we can achieve this goal. Innovation policy is connected to both universities and research institutions in Finland. The problem in Finland is that our mechanisms are from the, an old world. Our university system is fragmented and our units are small. Research institutions, institutions need to be big enough to be competitive. National divi division of labor is needed and hard choices made as to what is researched in each university. We have to make strategic choices. Finland has 14 universities, 25 universities of applied sciences, and 10 governmental research institutes. This is a lot for a country of our size. The universities should choose themselves the field where they want to be a leader. Today, our universities and research institutes do too many different things. In German language, there are eight universities and research is small everywhere. Where we are today are results of the choices we have made. The quality of research increase with specialization. Universities need to be large enough to allow interaction between researchers. From the point of view of business, a research unit cannot depend on a single researcher. One researcher leaving should not make the whole unit collapse. Science progresses in international interaction. For Finnish research to be international and competitive, it needs to well be well-networked and among the rising science 
um, science countries. Furthermore, scientific quality and competitiveness of research go hand in hand. Competitive financing increases the quality of research. At the moment, Finnish research is not able to compete for financing. The quality of research has suffered and Finland is lacking behind the other Nordic countries. The situation is exacerbated by the fact that rising nations are doing a larger share of research. Asia is investing in innovation policy. China wants to shift its production towards higher skills. The new situation challenges the old EU countries. What Europe's position in research and how can we keep sectors of high added value in Europe? We need a second phase of university reform in Finland. We produce massive amounts of information, but there is a gap when information should be turned into products and marketed. The chain of innovation should be unbroken from research to product development to marketing. Now it's not happening that. We need a holistic approach in order to build an ecosystem. The innovation chain should be un unified. Basic research, applied research, product development, marketing and distribution go hand in hand. Research and the R&D of companies and marketing should be closed in order to get results from research quickly. We have information and mechanism to produce more information. We don't know how to use it, how to develop products, nor how to market them. You have to create businesses, but at the same time create demand. When knowledge work is renewed, the users have to be involved. You cannot simply develop more accurate indicators. You need to develop indicators that customers need. An ecosystem is comprised of businesses, but also the international environment. Have we in Finland understood how the value chain in production has changed? When production changes, innovation policy should also adapt to the new circumstances. Production is now moving from west to east. The digital revolution has made a new division of lab labor possible. Asia is now reclaiming the position it held in the 18th century. As a consequence, the relative prices of industrial goods have dropped by 40% since 1980. Digitalization has created a new value chain. Industrialization meant that production and consumption were separated. At the same time, world trade developed raw materials, production and markets. Now production is no longer divided according to sector, but production is fragmented into value chains. A single product is made in dozens of different countries. The iPad says it's made in China, but only a few percent of the money stays there. Where the countries along the value chains determines how big a share it gets of the price. Every country wants to specialize in fields high in the value chain. We need to know how to build a value chain in Finland. Finland has lost its knowledge in textiles, for example. With design, you can make lots of things about out of pulp, blouses, for example. It's not about the material, but the production technique. If it takes 27 steps to make a blouse, now you could do it only five. You need pulp industry and blue color labor. The problem is that the know-how has gone elsewhere. We only have design left in Finland. The biggest profits in the value chain come from research and development and services through the industrial internet. Finland can not only focus on the highest parts of the value chain, we also need sectors of lower productivity because they enable in activities higher up in the value chain. Basic industries need to be maintained in Finland so that we can have research, development and services, service business. Now we need to challenge the way we have done things. We need a radical and brave renewal for new companies and new products. We need to create tax incentives for continuous renewal, innovation vouchers and expert services vouchers. From a global perspective, research is, is mostly directed towards electronics, healthcare, 
pharmaceutical development, the car industry, and industrial production techniques. In USA and Asia, there are investments in functions that support industry. In the EU, the applied side has remained weak. There are a lot of patents registered in EU. Quality is high, but still industry is slipping away from the EU. The situation in Finland is worrisome. Experts are one-sided. Many countries have a certain industry whose R&D has de benefited other industries. In Finland, machine building industry has tra traditionally developed machine forest in for forest in for forest industry. Now the forest industry should invest more in development. New growth industries are material efficiency, energy, energy, energy efficiency, and water cleaning. The question is about the role of companies. 97% of development activities happen as a result of companies' <coughs> own decisions. Public funding is only 3%. We need to awaken companies' willingness the, to renew and their capacity to take risk. We can finance outside thinkers to go inside companies. When change is fostered, structures need to be changed. In order order to fostering growth, we need to be careful that resources are not transferred from making products to the public, um, public sector. We have to stress the importance of reform of business so that we can foster growth in the long run. At the same time, we need to create demand for research through pilot and demonstration projects. The Finnish government program does, have, does not have strategic goals or issues, but it's is rather a description of what laws are needed in each field. Decision making and motivations to do certain things should in the future be connected to economic policy. Civil servants give the instruments, politicians should point out the direction based on their values. Now things get stuck when politicians start to influence the instruments out of politics first. The civil servants cannot develop models and alternatives when everything is politicized. The future is no longer trends, but uncertainty and turning points. Societal development is not stable, but requires constant capacity for reform. Hence, administrative stability is replaced by agility and experimentations. Instead of defining policy, we need to test and renew, learn, renew, learn from failure and be bold in reform. Administration needs to be an Im in a politics should be predictive, consistent, and set long-term goals. Being flexible and dynamic is important. Who adapts the quickest wins. Tolerance to see new things, the capacity to try and do things differently. The education and knowledge level of the people increase in importance as we move to digital production. A greater part of the economic growth in international value chains is born from people's knowledge. We need to invest in knowledge and people who do research. The innovation chain goes through people. Thank you.